And just because being on cell phones all the time and having constant access to the internet and social media and the world is the new norm, doesn't make it normal. Welcome back to my channel. I have another parenting video for you guys. I did one a little while back about how to have close siblings, especially when they're far apart in age. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check that out. I'll link it for you in the description box. And it, I've been getting a lot of questions over the years about cell phones, social media, the internet, and how we handle that in our family with our two girls. So I thought I would sit down with you guys and talk to you a little bit about that. I also found a really neat tool called, just because being on cell phones all the time and having constant access to the internet and social media and the world, is the new norm, doesn't make it normal. The Trend Micro Home Network Security System Basically, it helps to filter out all of the content that's coming into your house on all devices, tablets, phones, gaming consoles, the internet. Every device in your house that's hooked up to the internet is going to be protected with the Trend Micro Home Network Security System, and it really helps to eliminate a lot of the dangerous websites that could be stumbled upon or hacking attempts or viruses and all of that stuff. We'll be talking a little bit more about that a little bit later on, but first I wanted to sit down with you guys and talk to you about kind of how we handle cell phones and technology in the house, our rules for cell phones, and some little tips and tricks that I have. So if you like parenting videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to hear how we handle cell phones and technology and try our best, to protect the kids from the dangers of all those things, then stay tuned. Hello. I'm really big about cell phones. I have a lot to say about it. Um, and I have a lot of rules for them because I think they're great things, but they also can be really dangerous things. So as far as our household goes, I have a nine year old and a 15 year old. Only my oldest daughter has a cell phone and she has a cell phone for very limited amounts of time, only when she's away from me or if we're home and she asks permission for something specific, like texting a friend about an assignment from co-op or you know, asking someone to go skating or whatever. Otherwise, she does not have her phone. It stays in my bedroom where I know where it is because it is a habit. I mean, I it's very easy just a couple of, every couple of minutes, pick up your phone, check something, look at something, uh, Google something, text somebody. And I don't want her to have that habit. I'm trying to keep her from developing that habit as long as I can. This is how we handle it. And it wasn't always that way. You know, she had a little bit more access to her phone earlier on, but it became a problem and I'll talk about that later. So now if she's not away from me or does not have, you know, express permission to do something on it, she does not have it. My youngest doesn't have a phone. She doesn't need a phone. I don't drop her off anywhere that I'm not. I always stay on site if I take her somewhere. So she doesn't need a phone and she doesn't want one, but she doesn't even need one. That, which for me, that was the only reason I even gave my oldest daughter one when she was around 12 was because we were starting to drop her off at certain places like church and different things. And I wanted her to have a way to contact me that was reliable. That's the only reason she had one. And it's still the only reason she has one because if it weren't for that reason, she would not have a cell phone. So on her phone, we have the internet blocked and we have the Apple store, iTunes store, all that stuff is password protected. That just avoids any potential issues with maybe getting an app that I don't approve of ahead of time or maybe accidentally purchasing something. It's password protected and the internet is blocked. And I got this question a lot too about whether or not either of the girls, but especially my oldest has social media. No, she doesn't, except for she does have an art. I guess it's technically social media. It's an app where you can share your artwork and other artists share their artwork. She does have that app, but she's not allowed to say her name. She's not allowed to show her face or give out any information whatsoever. And I am monitoring what goes on as much as possible. So I'm checking her text messages. I'm checking her app and seeing who's messaging her, different things like that. But that's the only social media she has. Uh, no Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all these things that are out now. She doesn't have any of those things. So then I was also asked when I think she will get social media or when I think a good time to give a child access to social media is. And in my opinion, I don't think there's ever really a time that a child needs social media. And as far as when I plan on letting her have it, I don't. Um, maybe when she's old enough to have her own phone that she pays for the phone and it's monthly service, maybe. Um, but I think, I don't think that will ever happen anytime soon, probably not until she gets a job. And so I don't really have to worry about that right now, but she really said she's not really that interested in social media. The only reason she even wanted an Instagram was because 
she wanted another way to, to uh, showcase her artwork because she is an aspiring artist. But other than that, she doesn't really want it necessarily. But still, I mean, I know a lot of her friends are on Instagram and things like that. And I'm sure she would enjoy kind of seeing what they're posting and saying and all that stuff. Um, but it's not necessary. And I definitely don't think it's a good thing at all, um, especially for children. Kids are very impressionable and a lot of adults are impressionable as well, but especially kids. They're not 100% confident in themselves. They're not necessarily um, being realistic or thinking realistically when they see these posts and everything looks perfect. And these people look perfect. They have perfect bodies or perfect you know, schoolwork or perfect friends or a perfect boyfriend. They're not necessarily thinking about the fact, and a lot of adults don't either, that that is not necessarily true. And I think kids are especially likely to not realize that it's not always true what you see, and that's not always the whole picture. And I think exposing anybody to that, especially at a young age, could be damaging because it could really um, affect your confidence and your self-esteem. And think about, you know, all the things that even we as adults sometimes find ourselves, oh, so-and-so has a better job or more money or a better relationship or, or is more fit than me or is prettier than me or looks younger than me. All of these things that you tend to think when you see social media as an adult, imagine being a, an insecure child or teenager or developing still with your confidence and seeing all these things repeatedly saying, well, this is what perfect looks like. And if you don't look like that, then you're not perfect. You're not worthy of all these likes that this person's getting because you don't look like that. You don't get those grades. You don't have that relationship. You don't have that body, you know, whatever the situation is. So that, all that, not to mention the um, security issues that come along with being out there on the internet and social media, you know, where you live or your name, or all the weird people that are out there trying to prey on children. So these rules that we have for her about cell phone use, they are obviously for um, protecting her from online dangers, but they are just as much also to protect her from the um, kind of side effects of cell phones, the radiation, the damaging blue light on your eyes, the addiction that can come from having a phone constantly wanting to be on it and see what's going on. The issue that can arise where people, especially kids feel like they have to be entertained by some kind of external source or they're bored. You know, no child now just about has to know what it's like to be bored because the minute they start to fuss or get bored or anything, someone shoves a phone in front of their face. That bothers me on so many levels. I mean, I understand that you should keep your kids happy and quiet and try not to disturb other people. I know everybody parents differently and I know everybody handles cell phones differently and some people don't care if their kids, you know, are using cell phones or using them too much. I personally have a big issue with that. It's a big no-no for me, and I'm very, very passionate about cell phone use, not just for kids. I, I think it's definitely an epidemic that people are on them entirely too much, and it's starting too soon with this generation of always being on their phone. That's the problem I have with it, because you're setting up these habits early on. All of these things, these addictions, and these needs to have external entertainment and being you know, catching up with everyone else in the world and all of that stuff really adds up. And I feel like, and I worry that we're going to have a generation full of zombies because even adults now who didn't grow up with cell phones, a lot of them are addicted to their phones. They constantly have them. They're ignoring people out to eat with them. They're always on them. And imagine what a generation is going to be like that has had cell phones from the day they were born until they're an adult. So anyway, not to go any farther into it because I don't want to come off as preachy or judgmental of a subject that I'm very passionate about because I'm very concerned about it. And I'm trying to control that and keep that from happening with my own kids. So that's all I'm going to say about cell phones. Those are the rules for cell phones in our house. And um, it seems to be working pretty well. It, it was a bit bumpy in the beginning and I'll talk about that later. But it, for now, the way we are handling it is working out pretty well. Okay, so on to the internet. You know, the internet's an amazing thing. I remember when it first came out, I would write down things that I wanted to look up just to see what and all the information that was out there. And it was so funny because like you couldn't have a phone line. If someone was on the internet, then it tied up the phone line. And I was like, what if someone's trying to call me? You know, because my brother was always wanting to be online too. So I remember when the internet came out and it was like mainstream and everybody had it. And of course, I think it's amazing. I'm on the internet. I love the internet and the the vast amount of information and convenience that it gives us. And my girls are on the internet a lot because they do a lot of their homeschooling programs online or they do a lot of research for their homework online. So I do love the internet. I just think like anything, there are dangers to it that definitely need to be uh, you need to be aware of and do the most that you can to kind of control those issues. Nothing is going to protect your kids more than you being an aware parent. Nothing is going to take the place of you being 
in the room, keeping track of what your kids are doing, monitoring them whenever they are online, that is the first step. That is the most important thing. I can't be around all the time. And the internet is constantly changing. The threats on the internet are constantly evolving. There's people that are developing new viruses and new ways to hack people and different websites that are set up deliberately to trap children and trap adults. And it's just a scary place. You have to be really, really cautious. And there are things you can do other than being aware that that is out there and doing what you can to keep your kids, you know, with you when you're online or they're online, keep the computer in a main room in the house. You know, there's, there's the main things like that you should be doing. There are also some things you can do to help before the signal even gets into your house to protect everything that comes through your router on your internet. And that is where the Trend Micro Home Network Security System comes in. I had been looking for something that was going to uh, help me with my daughter's, my oldest daughter's cell phone, but then also the internet. My oldest especially is online. She's Googling a lot, looking for things for something to draw or something for school or research papers. And there are just so many ways you can accidentally stumble on things that you shouldn't be on. So the Trend Micro Home Network Security System is a really great way to limit the dangers before they even get into your house. What the Trend Micro Home Network Security does is it basically, you hook to your existing router. And it analyzes the information coming into your house. So it's looking for viruses, inappropriate content, malicious websites, anything like that. It is trying to find those things before they even get into in front of you or your kids. And one thing I liked about it, because when I was doing research for the cell phones, a lot of the programs and security systems, you had to get one for a cell phone and one for your house. The Trend Micro Home Network Security System basically covers everything in your house that's connected to the internet. So gaming consoles, tablets, cell phones, laptops, desktop computers, Anything that's connected to your router is going to be protected by the Trend Micro Home Network Security System. So you can control social media. You can also set time limits for social media or online or gaming consoles. So you're really having a, uh, a lot of control over how much time is spent on things. And I think especially with gaming consoles, gaming is such a big deal right now that a lot of kids get on there and they don't realize they've been on there for hours. So you can definitely set time limits on all your devices to um, keep your kids and even yourself if you find that you are addicted to any of these things and you really want to kind of minimize the time you're spending online whether that's gaming or on your tablet or on your cell phone you can do that to um, you can do that with the trend micro home network security system so having the trend micro home network security system is really going to give you a little extra peace of mind and kind of an extra set of hands and an extra pair of eyes watching what your kids are doing online. I will have a link for you guys for the Trend Micro Home Network Security System in the description box, as well as a $20 off promo code. It's already very affordable, but just that $20 extra is gonna make it even better and even more affordable. And I think it's really, 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 really important. We have got to protect our kids from the internet and the dangers of the internet. So like I said earlier, I was gonna to touch a little bit on how limiting my daughter's cell phone and kind of how we have it set up, has that caused any arguments? And they ask also specifically about the social media, her not having social media. And like I said, she's not really that concerned about social media, but yes, we have had quite a few arguments about cell phones over the years. Like I said, she got her first cell phone when she was 12 and it's always been a hand-me-down for me and my husband. We've never gone out and bought her a new phone. It was always something that we had that was still a nice phone, still reliable, but nothing new and expensive. It was something that was already paid off and that's kind of how it works around here. Um, but she wasn't really worried about social media, but yeah, the pretty much the only arguments we ever really had in recent years have been about cell phones and her wanting to have it more and me wanting to her to have it less and kind of that back and forth. So what really has solved a lot of those arguments is basically taking the phone away. When she's not out of my sight or she doesn't have permission to have it, like coming and asking me to have it, um, it's not and her it's not accessible to her and that has really helped the most because i don't lose track of where it is like if we got home and she had her phone and i didn't necessarily remember she had her phone she might have it in her room be texting people or whatever she does and i didn't like that because i didn't always remember that she had it and she'd be like well you knew i had it earlier but i'm like i have so many things going on i did not have i wasn't aware at all the times at all times where it was and so taking it away has eliminated that because if she doesn't have it I don't have to wonder where it is I don't have to wonder if she's on it she doesn't have it she's not on it the second thing is if she doesn't like something I'm doing as a parent it probably means I'm doing something right it probably means I'm ruffling her feathers and not letting her have her way 
more often than not, that is me doing something right and making the right decision because hopefully one day she'll realize when she grows up that I did that to protect her. But even if she doesn't, I really don't care because I know why I'm doing it and I am very, very adamant about cell phones and the dangers that can come from them. And I don't want her to be addicted to a phone. I don't want her getting damaged to her eyesight because of the blue light in phones. I don't want her to possibly be exposed to radiation that comes from cell phones. All of these things that come and all of the dangers that are online. I don't want to expose her to that any more than necessary. Even if she doesn't like it, it's just the way it is and I'm sorry. And my main thing is I'm trying to raise my kids to be as healthy and normal as possible. And just because being on cell phones all the time and having constant access to the internet and social media and the world is the new norm, doesn't make it normal. It doesn't make it a normal behavior to be on the internet all the time or on your phone all the time or constantly feeling like you have to have your phone all the time. That is not a normal behavior and it does not lead to normal people people that are well balanced, people that can sit down and have a conversation with you, people that can sit down and be bored and not have to be on their phone all the time. And I'm not saying I'm never on my phone because sometimes I am and I am on social media, I'm on YouTube, so I am out there. But I also try to limit even my own time that I spend doing those things. You know, if I'm editing, it's when my, my girls are busy or in bed. If I am filming like right now, they're doing their schoolwork. If I'm online, I try to do it before they get up or after they go to bed and I'll check it a few times during the day. But for the most part, I try to stay off those things because I know I can get sucked into them. And if I can do it, a kid can certainly do it. And um, I just want them to be normal. I want them to have normal childhoods where they grow up and aren't addicted to a phone. Even if they have a phone and they understand the benefits of it, I also want them to realize that it is not a necessity and it's not something that is, it, it's like, a. Um, it's like a really fattening food that's delicious, but it's bad for you and you should really treat it with and handle it with moderation. It's the same thing. Um, and I really just want them to be normal. And not to sound like an old lady, but I mean, we grew up, my generation, we didn't have cell phones. I didn't get my first cell phone, I think, until I was 19. Um, and so, you know, we managed to have friends. We managed to get places. We managed to have conversations with people. We managed to have boyfriends or girlfriends and keep up with friendships and relationships without having a cell phone. Sure, it makes it easier and more convenient and I like that, but it's not necessary. You don't have to have a phone to do those things. So as you can tell, I'm very passionate about cell phones and technology. I think they're great and like I said, I'm on them. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook and I follow a lot of people on Instagram and I really enjoy it and I watch a lot of people on YouTube and I really enjoy that. But like anything, it has to be treated with balance and moderation and when it's not, it can be out of control and it really has to be censored to keep it safe for your kids and for yourself, to limit what they're seeing when they go online and limit what they're doing when they're on their phones. And that is where these tips and these rules that we have and the Trend Micro Home Network Security System come in place because all of those things working together, hopefully, will help to keep our kids safer and help to give them healthier, more normal childhoods. I'll have the Trend Micro Home Network Security System link for you guys as well as that promotion code. I highly recommend you check into that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure if you did, you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and make sure you have that bell clicked for all notifications so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.